and welcome to another week of Godly Play from Miss Leah's Living Room. I hope that you are all having a good week and that you have celebrated Easter and that you got to have some candy and some good dinner last week with your family. Uh, so I wanted to say Happy Easter and you might be thinking, wasn't that last week? But I would like to tell you that the mystery of Easter is so great that it spills over into many more Sundays after the Sunday of Easter, all the way to Pentecost. So behind you, behind me, you might notice that we've changed our color. It was purple for Lent, but now the color is white. And we use white because white is a new beginning like a fresh blanket of snow in the winter, or like a new piece of paper before you've created your art on it. White is new. And last week was Easter, and Easter changes everything. And so our story this week and throughout the next weeks leading up to Pentecost are about knowing Jesus in a new way now that Easter has changed everything. So I am going to go ahead and start out today's story. See, here's the white. And we are going to be talking about knowing Jesus in his absence. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that could be about. On the first day of knowing Jesus in a new way, some women went to the tomb where Jesus had been buried. With them were three Marys. There was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And they were carrying spices and oils because they were going to the tomb to finish what needed to be done after Jesus' burial. On the way, they wondered, what will we do when we get there? How will we move the big stone that covers the opening? But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. And so they looked into the tomb but when they looked in, there was nothing. All there was, was the white linen that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. While they were there, two angels appeared to them and they said, why are you looking for Jesus among the dead? He is risen. And they went back to where the disciples were and they told them about what they had seen. Some who were there did not believe them, but Peter, being Peter, got up immediately and started running towards the tomb. And John followed. And John got there first. And when they got there, John stood outside looking in but Peter went in, and he saw the linen too. But they did not know where Jesus was. So they went back to tell the others. But Mary Magdalene stayed. And Mary Magdalene was weeping. And two men in white clothes appeared to her and they said, why are you weeping? Jesus is not here. And she didn't know what they meant. And she turned around and then she saw who she thought was a gardener. And he said, woman, why are you weeping? And she said, where have they taken them? 
Have you taken him? Do you know where he is? Tell me where he is so I can go to him. And then the man said her name. He said, Mary. And when he said her name, Mary knew that it was Jesus, that she had seen Jesus alive. She must have reached out to touch him because Jesus said, no, you cannot touch me. I have risen, but I have not yet ascended. Go and tell the others that I will meet them in Galilee. And so Mary went, she went back to where the others were and she told them what she had seen. She was the first one to see Jesus alive. I wonder if maybe there's something in your house that you could bring to add to this story. Here's some of the things in my house that I thought thought of these hands that I have, someone praying. And I have this empty tomb. And I brought our Christ candle today. So I wonder what you have in your house that you could add to this story. And I wonder if this week you could think about where you are in this story. What part of this story is about you? And for you older kids, I have an extra challenge this week. As I was preparing this story, I was reading it and I thought, I can't remember how this story goes because the way that we scripted it today combined all the stories of all the gospels together into one story. And a lot of times when we hear the story of the resurrection, we tell it from one of the perspectives of each gospel. So we might tell what the version from Luke or the version from John or the one from Matthew or the one from Mark. And so today, as I was preparing, I read through all of them. And so that it was very interesting because all of them tell just a little bit of different pieces. And then you have to kind of put them together to know the whole story. So I'm wondering if some of you readers that are out there and some of you parents that are listening, parents of younger kids, if maybe this week you guys could read through all four versions of the resurrection and the appearance to Mary and Peter and John, and then let's talk about how are those stories different and is there anything in there that you hadn't caught before? Because there are a few things in there that had caught me by surprise. And there's always more that we can learn about Jesus, especially as we're trying to know him in a new way during this Easter season. So you guys have a great day and I will see you tomorrow at three if you wanna join me for my story time this week. So you guys have a great day, bye-bye.